So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint for myself today and we're just gonna do a quick kind of warm up video where I put down watercolors as my background layers. And as you all know, if you've been following me, I go back to those layers at a later date, maybe later today, maybe next week, <laughs> next year. Paper doesn't take up much space. I paint multiples at a time. I'm working on 140 pound paper. I'm gonna work on multiple different brands of paper and I'm using many different types of watercolors and I'm gonna go with color craving exercises. So right now I'm just craving to use this beautiful dark turquoise-ish color. I'm gonna actually work on another painting on a slightly lesser quality paper. This is Canson 140 pound XL paper, and this is just calling my name to drip. Sometimes if it won't drip, I just add a little bit more water. That was quite a bit. And we can, whoops, drip it down. There we go. And I'm gonna go back to this one and I'm gonna add this light green you can see the colors that I love the most and I use the most often. And I'm just gonna pull it out and up and kind of scrub it on my paper. Watercolor dries lighter on watercolor paper versus say acrylic paints dry darker when they dry. So sometimes you just wanna keep those things in mind uh, when you're learning a little bit more about what what mediums you like and what to know about the final outcome. And I'm gonna go into, I have no idea what this color is. If you're painting along with me, I want you to just go with whatever color you're craving in the moment. I love how those colors overlapped there. Watercolor is such a beautiful, beautiful medium. You can see that where it was running, it dipped out. And I'm just gonna bring that back out as though it's like a big cloud. One of my other favorite colors is this peachy color. And I'm gonna puff, I think I have a little bit, it's too bright. So I'm gonna put it on this page over here. And then I'm gonna just add a little bit of that color in here, maybe a bit more. And then I'm gonna dip into this lighter yellow. I mix my colors right on my palette. And I wasn't expecting to put that peachy color in here but I love it and I'm gonna work with it. I'm gonna go back to this particular painting here. And immediately I'm craving gold. I could see the gold I have, this is called Prairie Gold. And this one, I believe I had purchased from the local art supply store here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, but it's Stone Ground Paint Co. I believe that's a Saskatchewan, a Canadian watercolor brand. And I'm just gonna get some gold on here. I often put gold at the top, but I'm just gonna put it right at the bottom here. You can see underneath here is the Kiritaki watercolor set that I'm using that I situated this gold in. I was running out of this one and I didn't wanna buy a whole new set just for the gold. So I splurged and I went with Stone Ground Paint Co. I'm gonna add, I love gold, I love metallics in my work. I'm gonna add some metallics, just maybe drop it in right up here. And you can see I'm working while everything is still quite wet. That's the beauty of high quality watercolor paper. And this is very peach. Uh, do I love it? I think it's a bit too peach <laughs> for my liking. So 
I'm gonna just decide what do I wanna do. I might be bold and use this Kiritaki. It's almost like a, a lavender color. I don't use that a lot in my work, but I'm just gonna drop it in here and see what happens. These Kiritaki watercolors are, again, like a gouache. They're very opaque. So versus the transparency of the watercolor that I'm using. And do I love that? Not yet. I'm gonna clean off my brush on here. Add some water, kind of run it together. I don't mind that pink. Right now what I'm craving is more of a gray. So I'm gonna find my gray watercolor. Again, this is a Kiritaki watercolor that I know you can't see. My palette is situated here on my tiny table and I'm not gonna move it right now because it will probably disrupt the system. <laughs> so I'm adding in some of the dark. I'm gonna add in a bit more dark, I should say. And I'm gonna go with Maybe, maybe I'm gonna drop in more of this dark that I started with. Sometimes I do that and let it feather out into what I was working on. And sometimes I bring it back in, in another area. And this composition is becoming quite interesting because I can turn it and work with it with mark making techniques after. I can look at it and determine which way do I love it. Maybe I'm gonna work on it like this. And I'm definitely gonna go in and modify some of the colors up here. And I'm gonna drop in this green in the middle here of this, this page where I'm sort of cleaning off my brush but also creating a new painting. And my watercolor is getting a bit murky so i'm gonna just steal some clean water from my spray bottle and now i'm deciding you know i think i'm gonna add more of that gorgeous peach and let it kind of override some of that gray and i like that and it's all about learning you know what what you like what's working what's not and I am liking that. Again, just adding in more of that peach, which is kind of a darker color now. I love the shimmer in that gold. And as far as what other colors do I see I want to drop in, maybe, maybe a little bit more of this this yellow color, where do I want to add it? Maybe a little bit just down here. And that yellow kind of brightened it up. It's a very buttery, buttery color. I'm scrubbing it on this to clean my brush. And I'm gonna do, might actually let this dry and go back to it. So this is considered one layer for me and I'm gonna go back with mark making. And now what I'm gonna do is flip over to this watercolor paper here and this is I don't I ripped off the uh, the cover which I sometimes do and we're gonna just flip over to these colors here again I'm gonna spritz get them quite wet and these are just a mix of watercolors. I'm gonna just quickly swap out my water here.
the benefits of working near a sink. And okay, I'm craving this bright. And so I'm just gonna add it in the middle here, maybe up there. I'm gonna go into just mix a few other bright colors and just see what I get. And this watercolor paper is not as high quality. I'm just gonna add a little water to my paper here and instead of cleaning my brush, I'm gonna start adding, making this into a new painting here. I'm gonna go into this, I believe it's an iridescent gold or a fine gold by Daniel Smith that came from a tube. And I love just how pearlescent it is, that gorgeous shimmer, it's very light. And immediately I'm gonna dip in, I mix my colors often. This is Ultraviolet and this is by Stone Ground Paint Co. And you can just see all of the watercolor kind of doing its job, moving around. And I'm gonna add in more of this prairie gold. You can see the name right there by Stone Ground Paint Co. Just barely. And I'm gonna go in with just more of a brighter gold in here. And that Kiritaki gold is also lovely. Put a little bit over here. And maybe while this is out, we'll just add in a little bit of this, which is more opaque, this lavender Kiritaki color. Getting more watercolor on my paper. And these are not colors I typically use in my work, but I am really loving it. I'm going with just what I'm craving in the moment. I'm gonna add a little bit of this metallic bronze. Maybe just dab it in up here and watch it, watch when it does its job moving around. And I can just sort of See that beautiful gold, the bronze, and this was from a tube as well. I believe that was a Daniel Smith watercolor. When I first started painting, I never really thought I would ever be teaching and or doing videos. You know, this isn't so much teaching, I guess it's like just sharing. But I had put the colors from the tube right in here and I didn't really mark them as to what they were. Um, I'm really liking this. I feel like I could add in a little bit of a, did I zoom back out on you guys? There we go. I'm gonna use maybe a little bit of this beautiful, beautiful magenta. I'm just gonna drop it in there for variety in hues. So variety in the colors of the magenta that I'm using. Drop it in up here. And I'm craving this color here, sort of a yellow ochre, and I mix it with whatever this is. Again, what is it that I'm craving in the moment? And I love that. This painting composition is sort of coming down, downward. If I feel like I have too much water, I can blot it with my paper towel. So the heavier and the higher quality the watercolor paper, the better. I can also pull some color from here onto this page. So I can just use my watercolor brush, my round brush, and maybe just pull in some of that color over here and up here. And I might pull in some more earthy colors from my new 
watercolor set from the ocean paper. Uh, let me just see. Maybe some of these darker colors. I have no idea what this is called. I'm going to spritz it with my spray bottle, though. Maybe just add in a little bit of the dark over here. And just let all the colors mix. Maybe add a little bit up there. And this is going to be a beautiful background to do mark making over top with my Neo Color ones, my wax crayons, and my Neo Color Caran d'Ache twos, my water soluble crayons, as well as water soluble pencil crayons, Posca pens, any kind of permanent pen you might have sitting around, pencil. The possibilities are endless. Right now I'm looking at my my uh, Mozart watercolor set and looking at this color chart and I'm seeing some of the neons which this particular brand tends to have some beautiful neons and every now and then depending on the composition and colors I like to mix in these neons so I'm mixing this orange with this kind of pink and I'm just gonna pop it pop it in here and decide if I like it. I do like it. I want it to be a little bit more of a pink. And maybe I'll pull that down. Just drop it in here and see what colors I get. And I like that. And I can just show you those colors. And I find just as a tip, if you're just starting out and you're doing these color craving exercises with watercolor, it's really important to let the watercolor do its job and try not to uh, try not to move it around a whole lot. And the reason for that is watercolor is incredible at working its magic. You can see this beautiful bloom in here, which you know is a bit of a softer line and. You can just get those softer edges by leaving the watercolor to do its job. I believe it might be helpful having a round brush and using a fair bit of water. This painting, I really wanna drip it. What I would normally do is, I'm gonna get my paper towel handy just cause I'm gonna be dripping it onto my shirt. Oh, and you know what? Actually, I'm not gonna drip it yet cause it's still quite wet up here. I'm just going to dab that area because I'm not loving it and I'm quite happy with this overall. It does need to dry and I'm going to flatten it but this is just an example of a composition and so we'll just set this aside and again just color craving exercises. This is where I've left off with this one and before I'm just going to go back before I let my watercolors dry. I'm going to add my more metallics in here. Sometimes the page that you're using as practice, I've said this before, is the one that you end up loving the most. I'm just gonna dip in a little bit of that shimmery watercolor up here. You can see I let it, um, what do you call, let it drip. I'm just gonna drip in a little bit more. Just kind of flick my brush, not too much, but I'm really loving that. And I love the metallic that's already in here. I don't want to mess with that too much, but I'll just add a tiny bit, a tiny bit more, maybe kind of going in a downward fashion. And I am really uh, resonating with this now. I love this area here with the overlapping of the watercolor. If you've been painting watercolor and you have some watercolor backgrounds sitting around, just that are already dry, look at that you can go over top and you can get that transparency. With this one, I'm gonna use my Kuretake opaque pink. Maybe drop in a little bit of pink here. That's very pink, so I might go back to my ocean paper and just make it so it's not so pink. And we're working on another composition here. 
And we're just getting down colors that we love and that we're craving in the moment. And so you can see I'm working on several paintings at a time. And it's just the way I like to fit watercolor, to fit art creativity into my life every day is I don't have to love this right now. I'm, I'm not attached to these. I am just using it almost as like art therapy to kind of get out of my head. I'm just looking at this new set of ocean paper watercolors and I'm not as familiar with the colors and it takes a while to kind of get these going. Well, let me just see, I'm gonna try a little bit of mixing maybe these two colors. And adding that in, you can see how I often add certain colors in more than one place when I'm working on a painting. It's just, I guess, a bit of a habit. I'm just craving like a beautiful light blue, kind of a grayish blue in here. And flipping that in and I'm only gonna add that in one place. It's almost like a feature color. And I like that a lot. I might add that in over here on this almost dry painting. Again, show you a little bit of like layering. Just going right over top of what's already there. And spritz it a little bit. And I like that a lot. And I might add, I'm not gonna add that in again. Okay, so these ones, I am gonna set these aside and see if we can zoom in. And we can do one more little, little one. Just using this Michael's Artist Loft, 140 pound, four by six inches. This is pretty tiny, super cute, but it's such a great way to just play around. And like I said, just take a few minutes in your day. Let's just go to my Canadian company, the Stone Ground Paint Co. Oh, one of my son's pictures there. Uh, that's funny. Okay, I'm gonna go with This blue, the endathrone blue. Wow, that's really bright. I'm gonna dip into Prussian blue, which I thought was darker than that, but that's beautiful. I'm just gonna mix some of my colors, and right now I really want to get in the darkers, the darker blues. And I want to get in some turquoise. One of my favorite uh, turquoise, it's from this palette. And it's number 51 up here, this Kamarabi Mozart palette. And I'm just going to add in, oh, it's so beautiful. You can't really go wrong with these colors, right? Um, really, really beautiful. And I just notice this one dripping here. I'm just going to dab that off because it was a little too drippy for my liking. And what I'm going to do is take an old. This is just a strip from an older painting. You can see a bit of a resist there because I was using acrylic ink, so I'm not gonna waste this gorgeous color. I could write a little thank you card on here or make a gift tag. Interesting how it's changing into purple sort of on the edge there, hey? 
And this is again how I discover things. So right now I'm just cleaning my brush. But it's also this way of discovering other techniques, you know, because now that I do my acrylic ink technique, I love that. That looks really neat. So I'll let that dry and I am gonna add in some orange, just a little bit. So blue and orange are complementary colors, just like red and green and purple and yellow. And I don't wanna go overboard and add too much. I know when I mix them, I can create a slightly muddy color. And then I'm gonna add in, just lighten it up a little bit up here. Maybe add a little bit up here of that really, really light buttery yellow color. And I love this composition already. And I might just drop in a different color green in here just to add interest. And again, because I know that my watercolors are gonna dry lighter on paper, I wanna go back to like my feature color. So this turquoise, and I'm gonna drop it in and add more of it in areas that I want. I'm gonna go next door to this color here, this green, I think it's like a neon green, just to mix the colors a little bit. I don't mind mixing on my palette, just to add variety and interest into my work. And you can just see how vibrant that is and how I love how this is kind of overlapping here. And I'm so excited to go back to this and do mark making. And another thing I do is I have these Kirataki opaque watercolors. This one is a well-loved color. I've just purchased a Daniel Smith watercolor not that long ago that's very similar. It has a bit of a shimmer. And I put some of that in this palette because I tend to go through this quite quickly. So this is where I have a lot of transparency down and I'm gonna drop in some opaque. An opaque color you can see, I kind of splattered it a little bit. And splatter it at the top. Maybe add in a little bit of that opaque color right up here. And I really, really like that, the contrast of the transparency and the opaque. And just make sure, whoops, I smudged it. That's a happy accident. Actually, it looks kind of cool the way I smudged it. This is so small, I can probably zoom back in. And, uh, I love the bleeding in that area there. And I'm just deciding, do I wanna maybe move around that a little bit just to make it look a bit more intentional. But I really like how when I hit the watercolor with my finger, it made that line work. I'm just gonna take some of my water that's a little bit dirty from my, my water jar here and just add some whatever color comes out of the water. So I really like that. I love that grayish color down here. I'm gonna go to my Stone Ground Paint Co. Titan Buff. That's kind of like a beigey color, but I'm just gonna add it in. It's like a grayish kind of pottery type color. Um, I'm, I'm just really liking that. So I'm gonna add that, a little bit more of that in. I can always add more of a black to get the gray, but I don't want it to be too dark. I'm gonna add that in up here. This is just such a great little painting. You know those artist trading cards? I forget what the size of those. I think they're a lot smaller than this, but this is just a great little original. I've thought about selling some of my little originals like this because I'm so prolific, I do so many. I thought about maybe adding each one to an Oracle deck purchase and just, you know, increasing the price slightly on the Oracle deck because they're these little cute mini paintings that would probably fit in those Oracle deck packages. So many ideas. Thank you so much for coming with me today on my relaxing watercolor journey. I hope this has inspired you in some way and I will list the watercolor palettes in the description shortly and I will uh, post this video. Thanks.